What's up everybody? Today we are going to be performing a carburetor synchronization on this 2002 Suzuki Bandit GSF 600. And uh, I don't believe that this bike actually requires a synchronization. I think it's already synchronized. But uh, it never hurts to do it again and I feel like it's a big glaring hole in this series if I don't show how it's done. So what are we going to need to do this? Um, right here I have an auxiliary gas tank hooked up. Uh, we'll be pulling off the seat, pulling off the tank so that we have access to the carburetors and specifically the four vacuum ports on here. Uh, this is one of them. This one's actually connected to the petcock. This is what actuates the, the vacuum controlled petcock. The other thing that we're going to be using is this carburetor synchronization tool. Now you can make one of your own. Uh, there's a whole bunch of videos on how to do that out of 20 ounce bottles and liquid and whatnot. I prefer to spend the 60 bucks or whatever it is on this. These are four independent vacuum gauges. These will hook up to the vacuum ports on the carburetor rack. And what we're looking for is we're not actually looking for a discrete value. We don't care too much about what the actual value is that we're getting. We're concerned that all four of the vacuums are pulling equally when the bike is idling. That tells us that the butterflies are opening at the exact same time. They're pulling the same amount of fuel air mixture through and uh, the bike will run happiest if everything's in balance. What we'll be doing is adjusting three little synchronization screws and we'll get in there, I'll show you. So this is, this is my setup for synchronizing a bike. The other thing that we'll end up needing is, I've already got it on there, there's a barb on there. We'll just pull the fuel tank off and we will barb into the, uh, the, uh, I don't know, what am I thinking of? The uh, fuel in it for the carburetor rack. So one of the things I already did is I, the bike needs to be warm. So I let this bike idle for like 10, 12 minutes outside. So it's a hot bike now. Uh, you don't want to do it when it's cold. You want to do it at its normal operating running temperatures. So the carburetor, I don't know what this thing is, but uh, I think you could pick these up for like 70 bucks. I think you can get the auxiliary tank for like 30. So let's get this tank off, seat off, and this thing hooked up and start synchronizing some carburetors. if you're worried about the calibration of these vacuum gauges one of the things that I did um, I haven't seen anybody else do this but it makes a lot of sense to me um, I was trying to think of how I could pull a consistent vacuum so if you have a brake bleeder like I have this little mighty vac what I did was I hooked it up to each each one of these gauges individually and I know that if I pull on the trigger twice it should be the exact same displacement um, same same exact vacuum pull so one, two, where are we at there? So that looks like about four, just right on about 14 inches to me. So bleed that, and uh, let's give just one more shot to demonstrate my point. And then one, two. And that is same spot, right at about 14. It's a little bit different reading than I'm seeing on here, but that's the thing. We're not worried about the discrete values. We just want to see that all of these pulled uh, the exact same. So that's how, in my head, that these are calibrated. So the next thing that we're going to do is actually take the vacuum caps off of the carburetor rack. So what the vacuum caps are, are on each one of the carburetors, so you have a single cap right there. That's number three, right there. It's number two, one, and number four, you're not gonna have a cap on. It's this nipple right here, right there. That controls the petcock. And on this one, if you have a stock bike, this one actually won't be capped because it'll be connected to the pair system, which I've deleted on this bike. So you'll have to take the pair system one off. And we'll just pull all three of these off and then we will hook it up to here and we'll be ready to start synchronizing the car. All right, last step before we start the bike, I'm going to show you what we're actually going to be adjusting. So with my limited resources and brain capacity, I can't find a great way to show this, but there are three screws that we're going to be adjusting. The first one, see it down straight through there? It's a Phillips head right there. 
That's one of them. That's the one we're going to adjust last. There's a second one right straight through there. It's a little darker because it's in a little bit different spot. It's down there. You can see it. Hopefully you see it. Yep, right there. We'll adjust one of those. And there's an equivalent one on this side right there. All right. So what we're going to do is balance one and two together first. So we're going to get one and two to be in balance with each other. And how we're going to do that is by adjusting that synchronization screw. What it does is it changes the balance of the butterflies on carburetor one and two. So once we have those in balance, then we're going to go to three and four on this side screw here. We're going to get three and four in balance. So we'll have a pair here that's balanced and a pair here that's balanced. The last thing we're going to do is go to that central synchronization screw and we'll balance carbs two and three to each other since these will be balanced pairs and these will be balanced pairs. All we have to do is then balance the pairs. So there's going to be three synchronizations we do. Not too hard. If you have a CBX, it gets a little more difficult because then you got six cylinders, but we only got four. If you got a parallel twin, it's even easier than that. So now we're going to get the bike started and uh, I'll screw around a bit with the synchronization screw so you can see and hear how much it actually fucks with the bike if it's not in synchronization. So hopefully you can hear me talking on this next part or if you hate my voice, it'll be good that the engine drowns it out. All right, so it's a good thing I'm actually doing this because I can see I'm out of balance on three and four right now. Um, I have a wobbler over here. What I do if I'm seeing one of the, I don't know if it's a, a, an issue with the gauge or something on the bike. I actually, I, I think it's something to do with the gauge. What I do is I see where it's bobbing from and I take the center of it. But what I'm gonna do first is actually look at three and four. So I can see the number four is at about a little under half between five and six. This one here, is almost a six. So I've got a little bit of balancing I can do on three and four. So I'm gonna take care of that. So I've got it in there now, I'm gonna start adjusting. Just a little turn does quite a bit. So it looks like I'm aiming for about just under, oh, it's a moving target. That looks pretty close. Nope, too far. Seems to be moving on me. Almost there. Right there. I'm gonna call that right at a, right about, right about six right there. Just a little hair over six. I'll come back to it if it starts moving. Shouldn't start moving, but all right, now we got the tough one. One and two. Ah. Honestly, I'm going to call them even. It looks like it's bouncing right over the center point. And then, I wish it wasn't bouncing like that, but it is. It looks like it's right there, though. And I can see this one is slightly lower than this one. Just going to touch that center synchronizing screw a little bit to see if I can get two and three even. Here's what I'll do. I'll throw it way out of whack so you can hear it. All right, so I just threw it way out of whack. So now I have to fix it. I'm trying to get a good view from my eyes here. Trying to look through the camera. Looks like they're just past six. Did I go too far? Yeah, a little far. That 
looks like it's it to me. So that's it. When somebody talks about synchronizing their carburetors, that's what they're talking about. And you'd actually see a really clean and pretty synchronization if this motherfucker wasn't bouncing around all over the place right now. I think it looks like the central point is right there a little bit past six, I think. The rest of them all look in line to me. The bike sounds all right, so I'm gonna call this <coughs> synchronized, synchronized enough. Uh, if it was a, a water-filled gauge or something, you may not see, be seeing all that bounce. Guys, that's how you synchronize a carburetor on an inline four or a parallel twin or, or an inline six. Um, you may have a carburetor that actually needs one of these extensions to put into the vacuum port. Uh, on this bike, it's easy enough to get right to the nipples so you don't need it. Um, it's actually a fairly simple process. When I first read, did you synchronize your carburetor? Uh, that sounded like a big scary kind of thing. You need a whole bunch of electronics and all this other kind of stuff. It's actually fairly simple and straightforward. You do, you can do it all with homemade stuff, but honestly, I would recommend just getting um, the synchronizing tool if you're gonna do it more than once, once or twice in your life, just because it's uh, fairly, fairly simple if you have this. Unfortunately, that, that bouncing gauge really <laughs> kind of threw a, a wrench into the quality of this video. I'll have to do some research on what that bouncing gauge actually means, if it's a, an artifact of the bike, or if it's just an artifact, not artifact, but a potential, I wouldn't say defect, because you do see, it, I mean, gauges bounce, they just, that's actually why you see a lot of these, they're water filled, is that to actually eliminate that type of, of jitter. But what we saw is we were just under six, um, uh, it's not millimeter, it's not tor, uh, millimeters or inches of water, whatever the vacuum pulled, Measurement is we were, we were even across these three, and I believed that we were right at the center point of that balancing on carburetor number one. So I'd call this thing synchronized at this point if you're chasing issues and you're not certain, and you've been taking that carburetor on and off a bunch of times. You may have been nicking those synchronization screws on accident, and it, it's worth checking this out to, to see if you threw it off balance. It's, it's going to run best if it's in balance. So uh, that is the synchronizing of the carburetors. I'm glad I checked it because. Three and four were out of balance, and I didn't realize it. <laughs> Thank you for watching.